This is Night Call. Uh, it's one of two games I intend to play tonight. The other one is Neocab. They're both games about being a cabbie and uh, listening to the people in your back seat and telling some broader story uh, as a result of these uh, sort of nighttime encounters. And I don't really, I haven't started playing either one of them yet. I don't know how they're different. Uh, I don't know anything besides the fact that this is a curious and interesting trend uh, that, <laughs> that somebody has apparently created. So it's kind of like how Armageddon and Deep Impact came out in the same year. You know, Nightcall and Neocab, they just feel like they're a pair. And so I want to try them out together. If I do successfully manage to make both videos, I'll make sure to, uh, to link the other one in the cards uh, up above. So Night Call is on Game Pass, and that's how I'm playing it. Um, yeah, start a new game and see what's up with this thing. Choose the investigation. The judge. Victims all have something in common, and the motives seem clear. But which suspect could have done it? Balanced case, perfect for a first run. Well, that's probably what I'll do. Then we've got the Angel of Death, Random Victims, Unknown Motive, Weird Case, More Difficult, The Sandman. Victims may feel random at first, but there's a connection. So are these, are these like completely scripted out stories? They feel like they might have some random elements. Are they just saying random victims like in the story they're random? Or is it actually telling me that there's a game mechanic generating random victims? Surprise investigation. It doesn't tell me which one. And then... Interesting. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to go with the judge, because that's what they recommend for a first run. And let's go balanced. See what they intended. And this is one of many times I've seen a conspiracy board on a wall in a video game. I don't know if they're going to make more out of it, but... Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite weird things that's, that I've seen showing up in different games. Monkey Moon. Okay, so I'm in Paris. You can tell from the license plate and from <laughs> the fact that it says it's a taxi Parisienne. Or uh, Parisien, I think is how you pronounce that. I think if I pronounce the N too much, it becomes a female taxi. Night call. So far, I've established I'm a guy with a taxi. Here? What? Sir, can you hear me? Or do I need to speak up? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I just want you to be comfortable. You can always change your mind. The voice is female, husky, and worn. You find it deeply comforting. I like those little parentheses that appear, you know, uh, around the explanations of your thoughts. Uh, do you want me to speak in a normal, medium, or loud voice? Uh, it's fine like that. She takes a deep breath. Sir, you just spent two weeks in a coma. The word bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. Coma? The word scratches along your throat. Yes, you were the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head, victim. You are aware a serial killer is currently on the loose in Paris. You feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. This is very evocative language. The judge, as the police call the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver and in most circumstances it would have been fatal. We chose to put you in an induced... Her voice becomes more distant, faded. You taste bile at the back of your mouth. Your head is burning. 
you hear a whistle in one ear. Yeah, very um, sen sensual writing. Sensual is the wrong word. That makes it sound sexy. I just mean like they're evoking my senses. Your fingers move to your wound. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It's incredibly painful. Did they... I'm sorry? Did they catch the judge? No. Hmm. Oh. What about my passenger? He was dead before you even got out of your cab. The doctor is silent for a second. A very awkward second. She hesitates. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who survived the judge. Noise in the hallway attracts your attention. You try to turn your head to no avail. They're definitely saving on art by having me uh, <laughs> stare straight up a light at a light fixture the whole time. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care he's the only witness. He's... Another female voice joins in. A strong authoritarian voice. You can't clearly make up what she's saying. A strange feeling washes over you. It's not pain, not fatigue. Some odd combination of the two. By the way, you can't make up what she's saying? It's supposed to be you can't make out what she's saying, but I find it fascinating that a game set in France um, with, with uh, I imagine, uh, French-speaking characters uh, is messing up English prepositions because that's a classic thing that when someone's learning English from French, uh, that's one of the mistakes that you make is you, you end up swapping the prepositions around because the boundaries between the prepositions are just in different places in the two languages. Uh, it's not pain, not fatigue, some odd combination of the two. Before being in this hospital room, he'd never realized that anger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion. Anger. A feeling you know all too well. Days go by, and a month later. Night one. All right, here we go. Well, look, I got a bit of a problem. A real problem, that is. You have a pounding headache. It's your first night behind the wheel since... You know. Since the attack. Are you listening to me? You catch your boss's eye in the rearview mirror. <laughs> Sorry is, is, is what I would say because... Um, uh, I got, in Disco Elysium, I actually got the uh, special thought, what were they called? The things you would mull over your head for a while? I had one that was called Sorry Cop, because I just kept apologizing all the time. I just want things to get back to normal, to clear my head, to stop thinking about it all. He's watching you closely, trying to make out what's going on in your head. You know I'm worried about you, don't you? I know. You're like a son to me, you know. By the way, I like the little speech bubble arrows that are pointing in each direction. I know. And you know he's about to tell you the story of his taxi fleet, again. When my father died and he left me the store, I could have sold it. I could have retired, gone back to the old country. Uh, sure. But I decided to start a cab fleet with the money he left me, to hire the guys from the neighborhood. And that's why I got 45 guys like you working for me. His hands flutter in the air. Though none of them are any match for you. He smiles. His voice suddenly takes on a serious note. Do you want me to go over everything again? He points to the equipment on the dashboard, the meter, the GPS. You haven't been in a taxi for weeks. Maybe you do need a little refresher. I think I might need a refresher. Yeah, good idea. Right then, well first the map. You spot a potential, cu uh, sorry, you spot potential customers and try to guess where they'll be going. Then you decide. All right. When a customer orders a taxi and if there's no one else around, you have to go pick them up. He shrugs. That's the way it goes. It's business. All right. The other fares, you look at a map and you decide whether or not you want to take them. Then you drive. 
He flashes a quick mechanical smile. You know it well. When he talks about work, he talks about work. That's all. When your shift is over, we do the numbers and... His voice trails off as if searching for the right words. And that's all. It's pretty simple. There's no reason why you can't do it. Oh, right. No overtime. We're in France here. There are rules. Regulations. <laughs> you might not see it that way, but no one likes having a driver who hasn't slept for 24 hours. He looks away. Something's been bothering him since he got into the cab. Anyhow, you know the ropes. You get it. I know you're going to do a good job. What's the matter? Your boss keeps quiet for a while, as if he's hesitant to speak. And then... I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't be driving. The murderer's still out there, and we think he's going to come back for you. Well, he doesn't know who I am. He could have seen your face. The police are positive he didn't. He attacked from behind. I fell to the ground, then he took off. Silence. Your eyes lock. He holds your gaze. He wants to believe you, to be on your side. He looks away. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. Every minute spent in your taxi is a minute lost. He gives you a smile, half ironic, half serious. Hmm, what's the difference between these two? Have a good evening. The sarcasm in his voice is palpable. Right, you have a good evening too. He'll spend the rest of the night dealing with problems and drivers. You wonder how and when the guy ever gets any sleep. I kind of like that they made your boss not be some kind of terrible person. That's sort of the default thing you usually do in a story like this. But uh, no, he actually seems like a pretty cool boss. <laughs> all right. A couple of colleagues are milling about. Taxis are coming and going. They all ignore you. Consciously or unconsciously. You're branded. You sit there a moment, then turn the key in the ignition. The hum of the engine sends a tingle down your spine. It's impossible to describe how you missed that feeling. It's back to the night shift. Back to life. Despite the attack. Despite it all. Okay, so we've got a game here. That, oh wow, okay, so there's... I'm kind of surprised actually that there's so many options here. Wow. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. He said I should guess where the people are trying to go. I, I, I don't think I uh, know, but is that my boss? <laughs> this woman looks like she's kind of upset. Uh, let's see if we can help her. Two women cross the street in front of your cab. They're laughing so loud that you can't help but smile yourself. Mon prenasse, please. Okay, sure. You pull up to a local police station to pick up your next passenger. She comes out from under an archway, visibly frightened. She slips into the back seat of the cab and gives you her address, near Montparnasse. You glance at her in the rearview mirror and notice how she's dressed. Everything all right, ma'am? You start the cab. Your passenger eyes you intently, reluctant to speak. Yes. Oh, she's got the same name as the actress who plays uh, Christian Abbasarala in uh, The Expanse. Does that mean that she's Persian? You can barely hear her. She points to the car radio. Could I listen to the radio? You nod yes. Which station? Uh, my wallet was stolen. She pauses and fixes her eyes on you. You freeze. I have money for the fare. Okay. The passenger senses your surprise. I just wanted to, to tell you I could pay. She looks down. What kind of music? Uh, excuse me? Uh, the radio. What kind of music should I put on? Uh, the woman shakes her head. Uh, no, could you turn it to 89.4? You hold down the button until you get to the station. On 89.4, there's nothing but static. Are you sure that... 
The hint of a smile plays across her mouth, faint, but a smile even so. She waits a second or two before answering. Can you hear it? You lean forward slightly, closer to the radio. Behind the sounds of electric sputtering, there's something else, a shifting sound. It sounds like... Um, let's go whale song. A whale? Whoa, what? Interesting, okay, I get a specific achievement for saying that. Or at least it says I, I heard something. Strange. So a strange smile flickers across her face. Yes. Now that you mention it, you're right. Her voice trails off. It's the frequency that causes it. It vibrates, is constantly dancing about, pulling all the, uh, pulled by all the incredible forces surrounding us. Most people listen to music, to the news. As for me, when I work, I like to listen to isolated frequencies like these. They're broadcast, but no one hears them. The proof that we exist. She smiles at you. You're getting close to the passenger's address now. And what do you do for a living? Math. She seems mesmerized by the sound of the wavelengths. What kind of math? Algebra first. Linear algebra. And now, harmonic analysis. Spectral theory. A funny smile plays across her face. But you know how it is. Changing all the time. You nod very slowly. The client suddenly straightens up and points to the radio. It's beautiful. So incredibly beautiful. Listen. You listen. You only hear static at first. And then... Little by little, like a distant figure, the music takes shape and slips softly into your ears. Beautiful, isn't it? To me, they were ghosts, and that's why I studied science, and later mathematics. I wanted to know why. You pull over. This seems like a reason to study psychology. <laughs> because I've had that experience, right? Of like thinking I can hear music in the background. And then when I investigate it, what, what it is is my dishwasher um, in the next room, making just a small amount of noise that my brain is reading as music. And so like, I think, yeah, she probably might have gotten into the wrong field uh, based on that experience. Uh, you pull over. Oh, hey, Dan31 just showed up. Good to see you, Dan31. She gets the fare ready while you slowly turn up the radio. Beneath the layer of interference, someone is speaking. Like the voice of a child. Thank you. You emerge from your trance and take the fare. Your passenger exits the cab and walks away without another word. You sit there, immersed in the sound of the radio a while longer. It has a soothing effect on you. You start the engine and drive away. Okay, so... Cool. So is this what the game is going to be like? Is it just going to be like... I mean, I know we've got this over overarching story about the serial killer. But is most of it just going to be these little vignettes of just like meeting a strange person who's just got some kind of odd backstory to them? Um, let's see. Who else we want to... She looks interesting. Is that Daredevil? That looks like Daredevil. Let's go, let's go see this guy. Out of the blue, for a long second, your wound really hurts. Your vision grows blurry and then the subtitle goes away. Um, all right. Javier Tersev. Uh, or maybe Xavier Tersev. I don't know how he wants to pronounce that. It just says I need to get out of here. Okay, sure. I feel like I'm not really getting a lot of sound from this game really quiet here I've just turned it up as loud as I can it's not a lot going on though you pull up next to the sidewalk a few meters from the abandoned warehouse no sign of your passenger you wait a minute staring at the meter you really don't feel like wasting your time on people who you heard a window break on the second floor of the warehouse a body falls heavily to the sidewalk <laughs> you lay your hand on the door handle when a man, dressed entirely in black, 
jumps out the window and lands on the body. He stands up and takes a few steps over to your cab. Are you the cab I ordered? Uh, you nod your head very, very slowly. Super, I'm the one you're waiting for. Be right there. He turns around, places his fingers in the neck of the inanimate body, takes his pulse. He comes back over, opens the door, and jumps into the back seat. You can start driving. Nui, please. You follow orders without a second thought. In the back, your passenger smells like sweat and gunpowder. He's been running. Been in a fight, maybe. Probably. His muscles bulge in rhythm with his heart, which is racing. Oh, is that guy okay? Who? His husky voice gets higher. Oh, him. Uh, he, don't worry, he's unconscious long before he went out the window. What? And an ambulance is on its way. What? So no worries. Sure, I'm not going to worry about that. You open your eyes a bit wider, he notices. Okay, alright, come on, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You're on to me and you know it. I'm the masked joker. Silence. You squint to get a closer look at your passenger. The masked joker? The hero that makes Parisian nights more peaceful? No? You slowly shake your head. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. I'm all over Twitter. So probably on the radio and in the newspapers, I think. So what exactly do you do? I protect people. I'm a guardian. Like a superhero? No, I don't have any superpowers. But it's the same idea. Yes, I, I mean, for the moment. I mostly take care of small-time crooks, pickpockets. It's not very prestigious, but you have to start somewhere. So, uh, Ezekiel just showed up, uh, says hello from Argentina. Is this Neo, uh, Neo Taxi? Uh, I think you might be thinking of Neo Cab, at least that's the, the name that it uses in English. Um, I'm playing Night Call, but the whole point of tonight is that I want to play Night Call and Neo Cab back to back to see how they're different. So I've never played either game before, so this is my second fare in Night Call. So I'm going to play this for a little bit, then I'll switch to Neocab, and we can kind of, you know, see, see how each of these games deals with basically the same premise. It's not very prestigious, but you have to start somewhere. You open your mouth, but nothing worth saying comes out. I suppose so? So how about the name? You like it? I'm not sure I get... So, I don't know what it means to have question marks next to a line of text. So, I I didn't choose the last one that I saw. Um, so let's choose this one and see if anything weird happens. It's Joker, like the card. And masked, because I'm, you know, wearing a mask. Silence ensues. Your passenger eventually clears his throat. See, I wanted something that wasn't too... He searches for the right word, beats around the bush, and eventually comes out with... Problematic. Did a lot of brainstorming and came up with the masked Joker. I haven't gotten great feedback, but it's hard these days to find a name everyone likes. You have to make sacrifices if you want your core business to succeed. That's what they tell us at school, anyway. At school? Oh yeah, Dan31, I am streaming to YouTube at the same time. That's why... I got a message from Ezekor, and you didn't see it. <laughs> yes, and ENK. He freezes. Oh shit. I almost gave you the name of my business school. What an idiot. Can you imagine if Bruce Wayne went around telling everyone he was Bruce Wayne? I mean, okay, so again, I'm not sure what the question mark's are for. Am I supposed to... I don't want to act like I don't know who Bruce Wayne is. I guess I gotta say nothing. No, Batman! If Batman went around telling everyone he was Bruce Wayne. I'm getting all mixed up. He touches his side for a while, like he's looking around, uh, looking for a wound. Uh, you're getting close to your destination. <laughs> Jedi Psych Tricks just said, uh, you know, I was about to go to sleep, and then I saw that for the first time ever I was awake when you were streaming. Yeah, so normally I stream so extremely late at night that it's mostly people in other time zones, uh, either waking up in the morning or not being up quite as late as me. Uh, they're usually the ones in my audience.
sense, but uh, tonight, yeah, I uh, got the got my stuff done a little bit earlier today, so I was able to, to jump on, which is good because games like uh, like Neocab and Nightcall are usually tough for me because when I'm really tired, I, I have trouble having the patience to do a lot of reading and play games that are that are slower paced. Um, and so I was glad for the opportunity tonight because I really wanted to try out Nightcall and Neocab, and uh, I can't do it if I if it's two in the morning and I'm about to fall asleep. So this is good timing for me. I think I, uh, I'm hurt. Want me to take you to the hospital? No, no, I'm fine. I shouldn't have jumped out the window like that. But you were already coming down the street, and I didn't want to make you wait. You smile. Pull over, right here in front of the driveway. You obey. Don't worry, it's, it's just a flesh wound. I'll be home in two minutes, have everything I need to, to take care of myself. He pays and struggles to get out of the cab. One last thing. Please don't say anything about... Enkid? Uh, I guess maybe that's the name of a business school in Paris. Uh, I'm trying to lead a double life. It's not super easy. <laughs> okay, so again, I don't know what this little face next to the line means. Enkid, my business school. He freezes. Oh, I just got it. You're playing along. Okay, great. He looks at you for a minute. Oh, so maybe the little icon next to the text is supposed to be like the mood with which I'm saying it? Like maybe that little jokey face meant I'm saying this facetiously. And and to, to help me understand that because it's hard just in the text to, to explain that. You're a really classy guy. Well, thank you, Xavier. Uh, he walks away, limping. You watch him as he tries several times to enter his building coat before heading inside, finally. As you go to start the engine, you notice a few drops of blood on your fingers. From the bills your passenger handed you. But I got 18 euros, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> hey there, zombie, and oddly, uh, looks like we've got a few people joining me. Thanks for coming in. Uh, all right, so that was interesting. The door suddenly opens and a woman gets into the back seat. Having a good night? For a second, you freeze. It's one of the cops working on the judge's case. So for those of you who are joining late, the judge is a serial killer um, who shot me like a month ago. Um, and so I'm just having my first night out of my cab after that. And there's a sense that I might need to try to um, investigate the judge while I'm out here. But I, so I, it seems like I'm mostly taking random little vignette uh, affairs. But now and then this larger story is going to come in and intercede. And maybe at some point I'll have an opportunity to at least contribute to apprehending the killer? I don't know. She grins at you. Her voice creaks. You remember seeing her at the hospital. Somebody already, uh, something already bothered you about her there. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. For weeks I've been saying to myself, there's something off about you. Something not so nice. I dug around, mulled it over, bugged all my fellow cops about it, because I was sure you lied to us. By the way, I love that we're in Paris, and you'll notice that the, um, the quotation marks are French quotation marks around uh, this text. I don't know if this game, maybe this game was actually, maybe it was made by French people, and so we're actually seeing sort of um, elements of the French language sort of, uh, you know, appearing in this localized English version. I really, I didn't do any research beforehand, so I don't know anything about the developer or where they're based. Let's just let her keep going. She has a cold sneer on her face. I'm going to be frank with you. She leans over to you. I don't think you're the judge. Nah, I just can't picture it. She squints like she's trying to make you out from far away. Like you'd have gone to the extent of hurting yourself? Yeah, in between us, it's a bit of a stretch. She stares at you. But not enough of a stretch for my chief to stop going on and on about you. Seriously, he talks about you all the time. If I didn't know better, I think he had a crush on you. She smirks. No, no, I think he's more interested in your profile. In prison at 17? An icy chill fills your gut. And for murder, too. 
You open your mouth, but nothing comes out. Since you got out, you kept a low profile, but you're lying about your name and your address. I checked. It's normal, you'd say, if they get the word of your time served, no, one, uh, no loan for your permit, no lease for your car, meaning no second chance at life. Her voice becomes softer, almost warm. I personally like guys who want a second chance. No, I like guys who fight for a second chance. Basically, I like guys who are willing to work for me. She leans forward, her shining cat-like eyes narrowing. My chief wants to go to the prosecutor with a first and last name, with evidence. Actually, knowing him, he's not so hot on evidence. So I'll give you info. Victims, suspects, medical reports, some photos that are a bit... She makes a gagging noise. You have to be discreet. Keep it between you and me. Interrogate. Ask questions. Dig around. I've never done this. She shrugs. Don't worry. You're already keener than half the squad. And don't forget. I'm not asking you to make an arrest to deliver the killer wrapped up with a bow in front of the station, okay? You're no Batman. You're just here to get me more information. She rummages around in her pockets for what seems like forever. Here, take my card. I'll call you in three, four days just to check in. We'll chat. And I'll let you know if I have any new info. She takes on a didactic, paternalist tone, like she was giving you a list of recommendations for the hundredth time. Don't get caught, don't get arrested, and I wouldn't recommend trying to leave Paris. I know what you look like and I know who your friends are. You can either be the solution or the problem, my friend. She takes a minute to scan your face, your emotions. If I have to, I'll go check on you-know-who. Her smile is biting. That reminds me, she knows you've done time. You shake your head. She snickers. Oh, my little dirt bag, you cover your tracks so well. I did what I could. Yeah, if you say so. She sighs in a tired, exaggerated way. <sighs> don't try to mess with me, man. If things go well, I'll turn you if things don't go well, I'll turn you in. I'll send your picture to all my friends in the media and every asshole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it. Your real name. Anyone close to you will have their places searched. They'll be put under house arrest, spend nights in jail. You have any idea how tense things are with that fucker's trial underway? You sigh. You know just what she's trying to get at. Come to think of it, your last names are almost the same. You could be brothers, actually. <laughs> I'm nothing like that sup a bitch. She smiles. Let me tell you, with that face of yours and your handle, they'll welcome you with open arms. She takes on a serious tone, business-like. I want to catch this killer personally. I want to drag him to court, ruin his fucking life with a bang. I can't botch this case, you got me? And neither can you, right? Uh, obviously. Well, great then, we see eye to eye. So you can just say you're my informant, my CI. You ripped open your gut, you saw your own insides, you were in a coma. Yeah, you got plenty of reasons to want to get back at him. She furrows her brow. Yeah, I think you're actually going to do what I tell you to do. You investigate, ask questions, listen to all the rumors you come up, uh, and you come up with a list of suspects. She lays her hand on the door handle and freezes. Oh, right, and don't get fired. Without this cab, you're worth nothing to me. You glare at her. Let's say nothing. <laughs> she puts her hand up and you can hear the words behind it. This conversation never happened. I'll make sure you get more intel tomorrow. I'll find a way. Until then. Not a word to anyone. Obviously. Not a word. The door opens, squeaks, and slams shut. <laughs> Une étoile. That means a star. I have covered 2% of the Pasadex? 2%. I assume the Pasadex must be a list of passengers? If I've got 2% when I've only taken on 3 passengers, how big is this game? On the back seat, the cop left a pile of papers. Shit. He in the ignition, motor running. Radio on, crackles. You turn it off and start driving. Oh, Dan31 took off, so uh, bye, Dan, if you <laughs> go and watch this later. Uh, Wolfo78 asks, any idea how long this game is? So 
I think we can probably estimate that if that if we just did three passengers and that was two percent of the old whole list, I think that means they've got hundred and fifty passengers. It's a lot of passengers in each of these little stories. I mean, they're not super long. They wouldn't take that long to write, but it's still a fair number of them. It includes a lot of like, you know, little not quite animations, but you know, pose changes and stuff like that. So a lot of work went into this. This is pretty sizable. I'm not gonna try to play a whole ton of it tonight. Now I wanted to get a sense of what this game was. I don't necessarily feel like, you know, that uh, you're all gonna want me to watch to, to sit through, you know, uh, 10, 12, 15 vignettes like this. But I do want to understand a little bit more about what this game is doing. So talking to passengers might unlock new documents and clues for your investigation. You'll find them in the back uh, back at your studio after your shift. All right. So I got more clues. They're available in my room. So how long is my shift? Was that it? So three passengers, I guess? So I'm like sticking clues on the board. Oh man, I love a game with a tack board. <laughs> Cause, uh, well, wow, what was it? Something, I forgot the name of that game. There's, there's definitely Do Not Feed the Monkeys. Do Not Feed the Monkeys has got um, a, a tack board command, uh, tack board mechanic, and uh, I really liked it. But anyway, so you take a second to enjoy the silence of your studio apartment. Outside, the city is slowly waking up. You can still hear the hum of the taxi buzzing in your ears. You throw the files busing. Um, is it Busset? Might be Basset. Basset gave you on the table. Okay, so do I. They've been gone since you got out of... Hmm, your plan is simple. Jot down all the pieces of evidence and connect them to the suspects. The guilty party won't necessarily be the one with the most evidence against them, but the one with the most compelling evidence against them. It's like you're building a story about each suspect. Trying to understand their motives. Understand how he or she got into this situation. A bus goes by, making the walls shake. You crack your knuckles and get to work. Okay, so we've got autopsy reports. Okay, so did I just open that up and get four clues? Okay, there's a picture of a crime scene. Wait, what? How did this work? Okay, so I'm holding to investigate each one of these things. Then it's filing it away. I'm not really getting a moment to understand what it is, though. Does that matter? Okay, so I'm just holding the button on each of these things, but then... Okay, did this stuff end up on the board? All right, so... Victim was killed with one bullet in the neck. Oh, so are these things actually related to anything? Because they left message in chalk in the first three crime scenes. Weapon is a rare gun used in the 70s. This one is connected to Palmeri Fragonard? No sign of violence. So this isn't connected to anybody. Death equals execution, not connected. Message on the crime scene. Justice. So are these the victims up here? Okay, so... Who is this? Okay, died two years ago. Oh, the dad died two years ago. Huh. She's, oh, she's Argentine. Just like one of my uh, viewers here. So that's uh, that's interesting. Um, okay. So I can't tell. What am I... Are these potential suspects? Maybe these are... I mean, they must be, right? Potential suspects, but but these people right here are connected to specific messages on crime scenes. I don't think I understand how this fits together. You deserve this. Time is up. And justice. Huh. Yeah, I I don't quite know how this is meant to work. 
So let's let's end the night and let's see what happens after I take another fare. Jedi Psych Trick says, isn't this one of the games that you can play replay multiple times with multiple stories? Yeah, so at the very beginning I had to choose which of several cases to investigate. There were like five different options. I think some of them were just randomizing the other cases, but, uh, but yeah, this was at least one of three. Um, so, yeah, and I imagine they probably have uh, generic fares you can get in all of the stories, but then there's then each story has also got specific fares that tie into the story of that killer. Okay, so with a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You slowly open the sofa bed and lie down. The events of the day run through your head. Dude, it is dangerous to fall asleep with a cigarette in your hand. What are you doing? He's like, I am French. This is what we do. Your brain is running at full speed. Your body aches and you are in pain. You can tell you need to get more sleep. I need to get more sleep. That's a coincidence. You glance at your investigation board. It looks awfully empty. Tomorrow you'll have a chance to fill it up more. You shake your head and your mind wanders for a second. Your eyelids flutter once in your sleep. So I kind of expected that that board would let me zero in on these characters and maybe learn a little bit more about them than I could get in those little flyouts when I hovered over them. But I don't know. We'll see if I can really start learning more from this second night. Uh, you open one eye. You stretch slowly. It's already nighttime out. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Alright. Okay, so we got gas stations. It's like, uh, okay, yeah, so I've actually got. Oh, you can, Oh, you guys can't see this. Let me move down to the bottom right. So I've actually got, like, I guess this is how much money I've got. This is the time of day. This is how much gas is in my car. So I'm going to have to stop for gas at some point. So I've seen this face before, I know. I'm not sure about the others. But it also said, I feel like somewhere on my board it said that there's a, an investigation location. Is that what this is? Let's just say that's what this is. I like this map of Paris, by the way. You can definitely tell it. I think... Is that... Was that the Louvre down at the bottom? Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, you park a few streets away from the Ar Argentinian embassy. You wait there for your contact. Huh. Interesting. I really hope Ezekor is still watching, because suddenly, for some reason, this game's all about Argentina. Uh, you sigh. It seems to, uh, so odd to have a contact. So excessive. The guy's one of your regular poker buddies, a night watchman at the embassy. You get out of your taxi and walk toward the big metal gate. Clean lines, early 20th century maybe. Lots of wrought iron. The gate opens and someone moves towards you. Uh, Wolf 78 says, by the way, uh, this game has a very interesting and noir feeling art, uh, a noir feeling art style and music to it. It's just drawing me in. I might pick this game up and play it for myself. Yeah, so I'm going to try not to get far enough to have any spoilers. Like, I, I want to learn a little bit more about how the game works and how the, uh, the, the tack board fits together, but I, I'm probably going to stop short at that point because I, I want people to be able to discover this game on their own and not feel like I've just kind of done the whole thing for them. Uh, so they indicate you should follow them. The person's face is hidden by an oversized hoodie. Your heart starts beating faster. What if it was... Follow. You walk into a narrow, covered passageway, probably the entrance to a parking garage. The man turns around and lights up a cigarette. The lighter lights up his face for a second, a young man with curly hair, pale skin. He looks young, very young. That'll be 25, uh, sorry, 250 euros. What? <laughs> you want information on uh, Gora, Goradisher? Gorodishe? I got info on Gorodishe. I'm guessing that's it. If this is a French name, I don't know. It'll cost you uh, 250 euros. Actually, you know, if it's not a verb, I don't. I think you actually do pronounce R's if they're not verbs. So I think uh, Gorodishe is probably what it is. Anyway, what'll it be? I mean, that's most of my money. Um, let's bargain? He raises his hands in front of his chest. His accent becomes stronger. Uh-uh. No. 
It's 250 euros or nothing. If someone learns I fished around, they'll fire me on the spot. Alright, there's most of my money. For that price, you hope the intel is good. You pay. Listen up, because I'm not going to say it twice. Goro Disher is definitely a colonel from the Junta. One of the few who wasn't arrested and put on trial. He is responsible for torturing dozens of political opponents. He tortured, he killed them. You know, we don't like him much there. But the rich Argentinians in Paris love him. They really respect him. Respected him? The difference doesn't seem important. So this is a victim? Is this a dead person we're talking about? I feel like there are mis there's missing pieces of information that I meant to sort of read between the lines and understand, but I'm struggling with it. Yeah, if it makes you happy, it looks back at you. There's one last thing. I read in the newspaper that the killer wrote a message in chalk. Time's up. There was a slogan at the end of the, uh, end of the junta. A sort of watchword for the opponents. It was time for them to go. You get it? You nod. My, by the way, my accent is terrible. I recognize that. I just wanted to say it out loud. I know that all of you observed that already. But it said he had an accent. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. Um, a second later, you're back in your taxi with a hole in your wallet, but with new information on one of the victims. I mean, technically, I guess I could have been doing a French accent for all the other characters so far, but... If you follow his lead, maybe your investigation will move forward. You start the car and get back to your shift. Okay, so there was a character on that board who was Argentinian, something to do with the junta, and yeah, so maybe this stuff is going to start tying together, and I'll start be able to being able to like understand who these photos are on the board and what it means. Okay, so we got mustache guy. I mean, yeah, definitely mustache guy. I really don't know why I'm considering anyone else. The passenger who's entered your cab slams the door and stares at you intently. Oh wait, what? That's not mustache guy. Can I help you? I don't know yet. Although the real question is, how can you help yourself? <laughs> Get out of my cab. <laughs> That's too easy. Her eyes flash. If I were to say to you, her voice is slightly raspy with an oddly metallic sound, if I were to say to you, October 27th, that's the date, the night of the attack, the night you, could this woman be the judge? 10.46 p.m. No, the attack pl took place later. Does that ring a bell? I've decided she's a robot, and that's why her voice is metallic. You nod your head. She waggles an accusing finger at you. Last October 27th, you were in this very cab driving a fare, and you committed a crime. That's right, sir. A crime. Listen. Her voice goes up a notch. Believe me, you don't want to interrupt me. I'd spent the whole day <laughs> I spent the whole day working like an idiot for that rotten newspaper. Do you have any idea what I do for a living? Exterminate! Exterminate! Town crier? She heaves a sigh. Very funny, absolutely hilarious. Her voice is increasingly aggressive. You can feel the anger bumbling inside her. I'm a sub-editor, Mr. Uh, taxi Driver. I correct mistakes that a bunch of moron journalists make. There isn't a single one, not one, who knows how to write a proper sentence. I'd had it, really had it, and on the night of October 27th, you cut me off. I'm... I couldn't care less. I'm simply telling you my story, my problem. You, you cut me off the night of the accident. I almost died that night. She grinds her teeth, you shudder. I crashed my car, my boyfriend's car, that is. The same guy who made yet another comment about women drivers. 
The neighbors called the police that night. I made such a scene. Do you think the guy dares call himself a feminist? He, <laughs> she pauses for dramatic effect as a disturbing smile spreads over her face. I'm going to keep interrupting her. What does that have to do with anything? Everything! I don't know. She's not a Dalek anymore. I think she might have turned into Lemon Grab. Except I can't really do Lemon Grab because I will absolutely wake up everybody in this house. Uh, her voice is suddenly noticeably quieter. Almost fragile. The next day. No more boyfriend. No more car. I messed up a job interview with a major news outlet. A paper where people know how to write, and they follow basic rules of French grammar. Imagine for just a minute, I could have stopped correcting copy for a bunch of morons. <sighs> but all because of you, because of your cab, everything changed the night of October 27th. A sad, faraway look comes over her. My life has never been the same since. But her voice, her voice is bursting with fury and hatred forced to go live with my mother while I went apartment hunting in this rotten city where tiny studios cost an arm and a leg. So I started looking for you. The back of your neck breaks into a sweat. You can feel cold, clammy droplets about to drip down your spine. I started asking around. I bribed one of your colleagues into giving me your number. A droplet of sweat starts sliding down your back. Then I found your address. Your first one, that is... You shiver as the drop reaches your boxers. <laughs> well, now we know what kind of underwear we wear. But that's your business. What matters is I did eventually get to your other address. The real one. The droplet has reached your tailbone. <laughs> I mean, when I said this had sensual writing, uh, I didn't realize I was going to be following a drop of sweat all the way down into my butt crack. But apparently that's what we're doing right now. At first, I admit, I was planning on going to your place. She shrugs her shoulders. Her voice has softened a little. Just maybe to spit in your face or something like that. And then I thought to myself, no, Lidavine, maybe the guy deserves a chance. You never know. So you're going to apologize. Sorry, cop. Go on, give it your all. Take your time. Take a deep breath. She breathes in deeply, then exhales. Like that. Wait, so does the smiley face on that mean I'm going to apologize facetiously? Or I can tell her about the attack. Oh, let's go with Sorry Cop. Okay, so the heart, I guess, means this is a really sincere one. I don't remember what happened that evening. But I was irresponsible. Sorry for everything that happened. Your car, your ex, the job. Sorry. Even though it's not my fault. <laughs> Shit. She heaves a sigh dispelling her anger all at once. I don't... I don't know what to say. You were... Then I... Uh, it was... Her voice has slowed down and no longer sounds like a Dalek. It was... A smile lights up her face. It was exactly what I needed to hear. I've been thinking about it for months, going over and over it, every second of the accident. Telling myself it could have been different, less complicated more, I mean, less, well, you know. Yes, I do. Good. Good, good, good. Thanks. All her anger's evaporated. No more looks that could kill, simmering rage or grinding teeth. Uh, my boyfriend was a jerk anyway, and then this job maybe wasn't so great. She gives you a little smile. I tend to get all worked up about things. By the way, I should just point out these visuals. Her hair's wet. Her jacket's wet. And look at the rain dripping down the back of my uh, 
my cab, my rear windshield. There's a lot of little subtle touches in the scene. They all kind of go together, and I don't know, it really fits with the mood of what's going on in this vignette, even though I'm obviously undercutting the mood of it by having her talk like a robot. And sometimes I take things a little too far. That too. In Paris, I guess we are quick to forget about being nice to each other, about being polite. And for a taxi driver, you're a real sweetheart. She gives a short laugh. Ha ha! This is what I'd suggest. I'm going to exit the cab. I'm going to go for a little walk in the cold to get my mind off things. I have to learn to... Her voice falters. Manage my anger. It's eating me up. She shakes her head and then, without another look your way... Goodbye. The door opens, then closes. You're alone in the taxi, your head spinning slightly as if you'd had a drink, just one, but something really strong. You briefly try to remember that night. Nothing. Nothing but a vague impression of something behind you. The killer's silhouette, a fleeting presence. You shake your head. There's nothing more than before. If only you had turned around, everything would have been easier. If you'd seen the face of... All at once you start the cab. Okay, so I thought that I was going after Mustache Guy, but I think she just... Who is this? Who is this? I don't know, but I need to drive them. Let's go. A woman is walking her dog, an enormous greyhound with a long, pale coat. Uh, wait, why is the greyhound wearing a coat? Um, Gambetta? I wonder what Gambetta means. You know, oh, it was a forty dollar, I mean forty euro fare. Uh, so that's pretty good. Oh shit, man! The next passenger is holding a bow, which he inadvertently pokes in his eye while getting into the taxi, and also rabbit ears. He leaps into the back seat and looks at you with a lost expression on his face. I'm supposed to be at the Gambetta bus station in less than fifteen minutes. Wait, is he? What is that shirt? You run the first red light you come across. With a little luck, you'll get this kid to his bus. You see him moping behind you. <laughs> Shit, was it really that hard to be on time, bro? You shit stain. You can't miss the bus. You just can't, man. Everything okay? Yeah, okay, this might sound a little crazy, but uh, what do you think of my Gravia outfit? Gravia? Yeah, it's a race in a game. The bow, the helmet, the armor, you know, all that shit. Um... It's a costume? A cosplay, not a costume. It's serious business. He sighs heavily and droops his head. Shit, all this for a chick. I'm so into her. I even started playing her favorite game, Lost Legend 5, to make her like me, but... I look like a moron. He looks at the time on the meter. Chill out, man. You ever done anything like this for a chick? Oh yeah, I definitely did some stupid stuff. Much stupider than dressing up. It's not dressing up, it's cosplay. He turns his bow over. This cosplay is for a convention? Yeah, in Belgium. There'll be thousands of cosplayers. It's pretty legit. Will there be lots of graviers? Graviers? I don't know what, what these are. I assume they're bunny people. Graviers. No, I don't think so. They're popular, but the costume is daring. You gotta flash your abs at everyone all weekend. <laughs> good, good luck with that. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I want this guy to feel good about himself. You really think so? Well, it's daring. Plus, if you're the only one dressed like that, it takes a minute to think. You are so totally right. How could she not be into me? You park in front of the bus station. Your passenger hand hands you a bill to pay his fare. Keep the change. I've always wanted to say that. Good luck with the gravier thing. Gravia. Yeah, thanks, man. A second later, he's running for his bus, his bow slung across his back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? He handed me a bill and said keep the change, but I've got... What? 
why do I have 4307 euros? <laughs> Come on, man! Make it work! <laughs> okay, so let's take that cash. I needed to pay more informants later. Okay, mustache man. I am on a mission to take this guy on a ride. He needs a cab. Quick. All right. We pull up in front of the American embassy. Oh, yeah. Mustache guy. Obviously American. You can't recall ever picking up a customer here. They probably have a fleet of their own. Or a contact with a private company. Contract is what that word said. The door opens. You take an immediate liking to the guy who gets in. Oh, yes, I do. You find him somehow reassuring, like a lost tourist. He babbles something in English. You have to listen hard to make out the address. <laughs> so, so all of this is in French. That's kind of what I thought. Oh, his name's Milo? What? That's my kid's name. This is, this is in the future, and this is my actual son. Uh, sorry, I'm just back in Paris. Forgotten my manners. He flashes you a sparkling smile. His voice is tinged with a slight American accent. Oh, he's really speaking French. Okay, cool. It's legit. I assumed he would have a terrible accent. Cause, so, I, I was taught French by Southerners. <laughs> and some of the accents were just horrible. So, not people from Southern France. People from the Southern United States who had really strong Southern accents even when they spoke French. Uh, it was rough. Anyway... Uh, thanks. What's your name, pal? You'd be surprised. Uh, you're surprised to hear him use the familiar two form straight off the bat. So, uh, yeah. So, so basically, there's there's two ways to two two kinds of pronouns for the word you in French. Just like in English, we have thou and we have you. We stopped using thou a long time ago, but the French still use their version of thou, which is two, and they use it um, only for like close friends. Vous is the formal word that you use for like, you know, if you're talking to a government official or your teacher or something like that, or if you're talking to a large group of people, you say vu. But uh, if you're just talking to someone who's a close friend or a family member, then you say tu. So you're surprised to hear him use the familiar tu form straight off the bat. So maybe his grasp of French isn't that good, or maybe he's just an over-familiar weirdo. Hussein. Ah, nice to meet you, Hussein. He stares at you intently for a moment. My name is... He nods slowly as if disheartened. If I reveal my name, I'll be left with no other choice. I'll have to kill you. He pauses, way too long to be joking. His face darkens. It's a different man on the seat behind you. And then his face creases into a grin. Hey, amigo, I'm joking. I work for the CIA, that's all. The CIA? Yeah, the CIA. You know, Jason Bourne and all that. The spy business. You're a spy. Yeah, you can say that. Is that why your French is so good? I speak eight other languages, too. You give a low whistle. Not bad for a Yankee, huh? He bursts into laughter. <laughs> no wonder I'm a spy, eh, amigo? He said A, which makes me wonder if he's actually a Canadian double agent. Uh, a wave of sadness comes over your passenger. You can read it in his gestures and the look on his face. You cast a glance into the rear of your mirror, trying to catch his eye. No luck. Is everything okay? Same as always. I'm only just starting to realize. He sits bolt upright as if someone had struck him on the back of the neck. I don't have any children, amigo. I had some under my supervision. Kids. One of them is... He stops short. He doesn't have to finish. You know where that sentence ends. You slump heavily against your seat and focus on the road. An automatic pilot in your mind, a blank. What would you do if your children disappeared? Oh, is that what he's saying? I, I, I didn't know what to think about when he was saying. Something awful. You can't even imagine it. The wrenching sorrow of a parent who loses a child. The first time I saw him. His voice has gone up a notch. You almost jump. He was beating up a black market supplier. The guy had sold him shoe polish that smelled like shit and his business depended on shoe polish. He was always stationed around Krakow Cloth Hall, the Poles call it, uh, the Poles call it Sukinis, maybe? Calling out to passers-by at the top of his lungs. His voice trails off. Bogdan. 
It wasn't the first kid I ever supervised. It's just, there was something different about him. He caught on fast, amigo. Know what I mean? He could think on his feet. He knew when to get tough and when to play dead. Bogdan was like a little Polish monkey. Smart, cunning, fearless, brave. Real comic book hero. Breaks off again. Wait, is it Bogdan or Bowden? Must be Bowden and the uh, or something like that. And the original one was a typo. You really cared for him? A great deal. I think you reminded me of myself. Like I said, amigo, I sense it immediately. First time I set eyes on him. So is he speaking French but throwing the word amigo in there instead of ami? <laughs> Why is he doing that? <laughs> he was beating up his supplier. Then I went over and handed him a Mars bar. That's what we always gave him back then. We had about five minutes for serious talk. For a serious talk. Before the sugar kicked in. That was back in 88. Poland was no longer a part of the USSR. The Soviets had lost. What an amazing country, amigo. You ever been there? Never. That's too bad. You arrive at your destination. A nondescript building, all glass and metal. Every person's unique. The passenger reaches into his pocket, fishing for the fare. Some are as cool as concrete, others fragile like cut glass. He pulls out a bill and hands it to you. Poles are made of steel. His voice falters. His eyes glaze over. I'm very sorry. You know, amigo, I'm not just sad. I'm disappointed, too. Disappointed? He feels for something in his vest. The idea of having a gun gives you quite a start. That kid entered my life like a jingle. See what I mean? He's struggling to find the right metaphor. So, are we looking at a black screen because something went wrong? Or is this a cinematic touch because he's just gotten out of the car? And they didn't want to, you know, either either because of resources, they didn't want to try to depict a different scene than you normally see. Or they're just really making you focus on the words right now. Life is like a radio. There are the songs, the interviews, the ads, and the jingles. The jingles are short, but they stick in your head. You can't get rid of them. You nod assent without thinking. Your client grins. The police got him. I trained the kid, and he went and got himself whacked. Through his own fault, too. I thought he was smarter. It's been 30 years, but Bowden, Bogdan, or whatever. That's what it's about. He really is confused about the name. Uh, that kid could have made something of himself. And he let himself get caught pit-pocketing a couple of American tourists. So we've got a different angle right now. I'm really kind of confused by what's going on in the, in the picture on the screen here. He made a run for it, got shot in the back. Dumbass. He opens the cab door. Cold air rushes in. I taught that kid everything I knew. Everything. Well, so much for him. He exits the cab. The door slams with a resounding echo. You sit stock still, taking in his parting words. Then you start up the cab. No better way to get your mind off things. Okay, I think that was my third fare, wasn't it? Last night I had three fares. Oh wait, why is this guy shiny? Let's find out why this guy is shiny. I want to see shiny guy. Whew, wow, I haven't played this game for a while. This game is pretty slow paced, but there's a, there's a lot in here. I mean, each of these little vignettes has, has really been interesting enough. Like I, I haven't, you know, normally I don't want to do a lot of reading when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm streaming. But I've kind of been happy with each one of these stories. I mean, some of them are weird, but you know, but weird in an entertaining way. The door opens. It's Hervé, a homeless man like hundreds of others in Paris. You've known each other for years, and every now and then he asks a favor of you to drive him someplace. As usual, he greets you quietly, though he always seems a little on edge. Hey, buddy. What's up, pup? It's a strange verbal tick that you never really understood. You start the cab. Hervé seems pretty happy with himself today. In the rearview mirror, you watch him run his tongue over his lips, as if mentally preparing for a good meal. So 
So Jedi Psychiatrix says, by the way, about the previous guy, I actually think they're doing a great job of emphasizing how poor his French is, with the reference to two and the misuse of amigo. Yeah, I do wonder if he, maybe he actually thinks that amigo is, is a French word. I hadn't thought about that. Sorry, I'm a bit out of it today. So I see. It's just, I had a bad week, you know, really bad week. Then yesterday, he hesitates as if he can't believe what he's about to say, like it's too good to be true. The lines are in the corner of his eyes that show his real age, crinkle softly. Hervé gives a little laugh. Serious, man, I don't believe in God, you know? I don't believe in all that bullshit shit. It doesn't make any sense. Some guy with a beard up in the sky? I never got it. What people saw in him. Anyhow, God, none of us believe in him on the street. His eyes crinkle up at the corners again. I mean, we believe when the soup kitchen goes to the church? Sure, we believe in him then. He flashes his teeth and lets out a, sh a harsh, raspy laugh. A pause. So yesterday... Yesterday? He's observing you. His eyes light up all of a sudden. Oh yeah, yesterday. He's talking faster now, an incessant flow. I was starving, man. It was pretty bad. Toby and I had gone through all the garbage bins in the neighborhood. Toby, he's this German guy. He says he prefers France, we're more generous here. So I was starving. Everybody's eyes tear up. His voice drops off. A faraway look comes over him. A lengthy pause. You okay, Hervé? He snaps out of it. Yeah, like I was saying, I, I was saying that, uh, yeah, I was starving, starving. I was hanging out near that supermarket on Rue Rimsat. Fancy neighborhood, but not too fancy. No cops. He gives you a wink. That's always a plus. And then there was like this guy I sometimes see around, like a young guy, just like a kid. Hit. He comes out of the supermarket with his groceries, and before I even say a word, he hands me a can of cassoulet. A can of cassoulet as big as a beach ball. Everybody's face lights up. I didn't even know they made them that big. Everybody bursts out laughing. His eyes wanders back to the street. Was it good? Delicious. He closes his eyes, raises his hands, and waggles his fingers. I love it when cassoulet sausage is all mushy and it melts in your mouth. This sounds like it wouldn't be my favorite food. Don't even need to warm it up. A smile spreads over his face. Meat mash. He opens his eyes. Something out the window catches his eye. Everybody suddenly passes you on the shoulder. Hold on, wait. I was going to get out of here if you don't mind. Mind. You park the cab as soon as you see an empty space. Thanks, man. He's looking out the window. Yeah, I think that's him. Him. Who? Nothing, nothing. Without another word, he opens the door and gets out. This time I'm going to get him. A moment later, he vanishes into a dark alley. Let's uh, sit there a minute. Your eye scans a dark, narrow street, but you can't make anything out. Then something moves in the distance. A silhouette. Probably Hervé, now to run. The form darts under a street lamp. It is Hervé, holding something in his hand. He immediately vanishes from sight. You sit there a minute, and then... You switch on the ignition, pull out of the parking space. <laughs> no money, that's fine. Well, okay, so how how late do I work? Like, I mean, I don't, you know. I was planning on trying out at least two games today. Wait, what the freaking Santa Claus? Okay, obviously, obviously we're going after Santa Claus. This is going to be a really long video. I feel like maybe I should have broken it up halfway, halfway through. Now I've got that. I've got everybody's ver verbal tick. <laughs> I'm starting to repeat my words. Okay, here we go. The Champs-Elysees. Your next passenger smells like beer. Now, it's even worse. It's like every single fiber of his Santa suit has been soaking in a keg. Come on, dash away! His breath is 96% brandy. Your eyes are starting to sting. I parked somewhere near the Champs-Elysees. Oh, shit. 
The name of the street is... His head is spinning, and he does his best to hang on to the door. I impasse. Uh, it'll come back to me. Go, go, go ahead, drive. You start driving, and silently wonder how to ask your passenger if he has enough money to cover fare. You glance back at your passenger. He's mumbling to himself. You can't quite make out what he's saying. Christmas is over, so why is he still dressed up? You have a nice evening? Ooh, fabulous. A smile spreads across his face, and I really needed it. He lowers his voice. He's confiding in you. After working my ass off all year long, I like to hit my favorite pubs. I get monumentally wasted. He guffaws. Ho, ho, ho! Here in Paris, there's a bunch of bistros perfect for such an occasion. No one talks to you, and they have white wine so dry it eats away at the inside of your mouth. So many different types of brandy. Pear brandy? Cognac? He closes his eyes in delight. Sometimes I order just one eeny weeny beer. Just to cleanse the palate. He all, he's almost whispering. Okay, it's usually not one of them fancy microbrews there. He jumps. Oops, uh, don't tell anyone, okay? He manages. <laughs> just imagine if people found out the Santa Claus thought beer here tasted like piss. He laughs, a sparkling laugh. Ho, ho, ho! When he stops, it's just a throw out, non committally. Anyway, you can't say anything anymore. Honestly, with all the trouble I go to, people should just leave me fuck alone. All those fair weather activists don't want their snot nosed miracles get laid a stupid toy. Oh, hey, speaking of snot nosed kids, what is it with this manure pile of a new generation? 50 years back, you'd give a kid a book, go on about his whole life, all starry eyed. Today's little whiners, what a eyesore. Fucking hell. They want to have it all. They don't like anything. They all have GSMs when they're eight. What are GSMs? Those things cost a whole month's wages. How do you possibly make them happy after that? How? He's staring at you, waiting for you to answer. A trip? A trip? He busts out laughing. <laughs> There's a shitty idea. What kid wants to have his ass stuck on a plane for 15 hours? I'll tell you what they want. Well, these kids today want are machine guns and dolls whose hairs you can fix. He seems to have calmed down for a second, but it was just an illusion. Speaking of which, both girls and boys like those dolls whose hairs you can fix. He twitches his mustache in silence. Back when I still made toys for kids, I can tell you, I couldn't care less about them. Couldn't give a damn! Just wanted to have fun, play, laugh, forget that their parents are losers. He leans over to you, rife with anger. Fuck, that's the real problem, I'm telling you. Parents are losers. Idiots. My kids will tell you that, too. Putting kids in this world, those guys haven't got a clue. Am I right, or am I right? I mean, have you seen the state of the ice cap these days? Have you? Huh? Because there's not much of it left. He pauses. Now, I can't say it's all bad. Don't have as many polar bears coming in my yard. <laughs> Damn nasty beasts. Beasts. Vicious. Mean. I'm not sad to be rid of them. So, so, I mean, I'm sure we're all getting onto the same page here that this is supposed to really be Santa. <laughs> and I'm on board. <laughs> he heaves a long sigh through his beard. Before, things were different. Tears form at the corners of his eyes. I can't talk about the past without crying like a little girl. He throws you a sideways glance. No need to stare. You don't even have time to react. He starts back into his rant. I remember you, you know. Tell the truth. Every, remember everyone. Every single person. You, you were an angry one. So terribly angry. Your letters, your handwriting. Oh, but you were just hell to decipher. Don't worry, though. Elves handle all that for me. You hear a hint of disgust in his voice when he brought up the elves. Otherwise, I wouldn't have time to do nothing. 
Yeah, you were just furious. It's like someone punched you in the stomach. Wolf of 78 is like, man, Santa isn't so holly jolly. Yeah, if <laughs> Santa gets drunk on his birthday, he's just like a whole different dude. <laughs> your brother was giving you hell. Something wrenching your gut. Man, what a... He suddenly thinks about something and stops talking. His gaze wanders outside. Yeah, anyway, let's talk about something else. I'm just not going to react. I feel relieved at some distance from that subject. You can't forget the pain. You jump and your passenger suddenly starts talking again. Wait, I, th I think we're almost there. Slow it down a bit, kid. He searches outside for... What are we looking for? Looking for my sleigh, kid. What else? He looks at you with pity. Shouldn't be hard to spot. There's a sleigh, a couple half dozen reindeer. He heaves a funny sigh. I'm uh, sure it's like in an alley somewhere. Oh, oh well, right over there. T -t Turn right. You obey. A few meters down, your, pass your passenger stifles a yelp. Oh, oh, shit, it was right there. Drive around the block. You turn again. In back, your passenger's mumbling. I'm gonna have to get one of those thingamajigs. GPS. Let me find my sleigh more easily. You eventually pull over in an alley. No light, a few empty office buildings, some trash cans that haven't been emptied for days. Good, sorry about before. I didn't mean, you know, bring up any sore points. He pays his fare. Watch your back, kid. Gets out, slams the door. He slips on the wet sidewalk, grabs onto a street lamp. With a heavy and awkward step, he clumps along the alley. Again, I gotta say, the writing in this game is very evocative. Like, you can totally imagine these scenes that they, that they can't afford to depict. Yeah, let's watch him for a bit. Sit for a moment, watching him. At the end of the alleyway, he starts rummaging through a pile of boxes, pushes a trash can on wheels aside, and disappears. A few minutes go by, and... Nothing. Turn the key, start driving again. You open the window for a second, hoping to get rid of the alcohol fumes. Something tells you they'll stick around for a while. Alright, well, Santa pays his fare. Appreciate that. Am I still going? How long is this day? I mean, this video is like almost an hour and a half now. I still want to play Neo Cab. Okay. Starting to get I, I kind of, I kind of want this game to have a little bit more of a. I mean, because it is so slow and it's all about you know reading these long conversations. I do kind of want it to, to, to mark my progress a little bit more than it is right now. It's like I, I feel like I don't quite know. Wait, no, up at the top of the screen. Oh, you can't see the top of the screen. Up at the top of the screen, I just realized my time, three twenty nine. It's it's going down. It's a bar. I didn't realize it was a bar. It was a bar until just now. So maybe that is giving me an indicator of how long I'm supposed to be out here. So it's so low. I'm betting I've only got one more. Um, so hat man, non hat man, hat man, non hat man, cool man. Um, it's, let's let's take wait robot. Okay, obviously robot. We're gonna have an all robot session today so okay notice okay the time is ticking down at the top of the screen is it gonna run out before I get there I deliberately chose one that was a little bit long just to see what would happen with the time come on run out of time let's see what happens oh it's probably not going to I'm probably gonna get there right at the last minute okay I ran out but I still get to help Ultra skaters? Um, you know what? Let's refuse to see what happens. Now we're out of time. Do I get to do one last fare no matter what? Or do I... Oh, wait a minute. Here's my home. Oh, but then here's someone who's flashing. I'm not sure what the flashing means. The last one who flashed was Hervé. And I couldn't tell whether that was worth... Okay, but... I kind of want, I want to see. So I, I got at least one clue from that uh, Argentine at the embassy. Okay, you now know more about your clients. I've met Ludovine. 
things didn't go well at first with Ludovine. Like taking money away from me. Nice. They ended up okay. Okay, so they tally up my money. And then I'm here at my board. You notice an envelope. It's thick and heavy. You can just make out your name written in thick black marker on the front. Your real name. You take a deep breath and go inside. In the envelope, you find more information, just as Bisset promised. You lay them on the table. All right. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so I guess I just hold to investigate each one, and it files clues away. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is... So the upper right-hand corner has got my time, and processing clues costs time. So I've got to ch carefully choose which ones I do. Interesting. So that means, so did I have the freedom? So the first night, I was forced home after three fairs. I assumed that was gonna be happening. Did I actually have access to my house much earlier? And could I have gone home earlier to do more work on my tack board? Okay, that's, that's interesting. So we've got, okay, victim three is known to have, all right, so Claudia Campos, is that, okay, so she lost her parents to the Argentinian junta, and so, okay, so she's a, let's say, I think this saying she's a suspect. And so we're connecting her to victim three because victim three was involved in the junta and it might have been revenge. And time is up is a slogan associated with that. And so it feels like the murderer definitely was aware of this person's history. So that's why that one suspect is, is a suspect. Yeah, so we've got all these things that are linked to this one person. And then... That's all I know so far. Okay, so, so I guess I'm going to be gathering information and stuff is going to be accumulating on these people. And so, I guess just based on this description here, all I know is, okay, she's a medical examiner and she escaped from Argentina when she was young. Lost her parents to the junta, so she might have a vengeful motive against at least one of the victims. But the question is, does she have any reason to kill the other victims? And there must be similar stories with these with these folks. But I've got a lot of limits here. I want to like I don't. I'm not getting a ton of context on these individual pieces of information, so I'm not sure how easily I'll be able to connect them eventually to all of these characters but it looks like it's something that is going to take a lot of time for me to figure out so i think we'll leave it here and we'll come back to this game at some you know i'll come back to this game some later time to try to see what i can learn and if you're interested in this game it's actually it's on game pass right now and so if you have game pass you can get it for no additional charge um, and i think it's actually not that expensive on on steam either so Anyway, thank you everybody for, you know, hanging out with me here, uh, checking this game out. And so now my next plan uh, is I'm going to go get my, I'm going to get my iPad out and we're going to check out NeoCab because uh, these games are on different subscription services. I'm pretty sure that NeoCab is on Apple Arcade and uh, Night Call is on Game Pass. So it's like each service is trying to get its cab game in there. So anyway, we'll, we'll wrap up the video, subscribe button, all that stuff and move on to NeoCab. Am I putting it there? <laughs>